until that, you know, we showed effort, energy, and just, you know, until we showed up. So, yeah, kind of brought it out of us, you know. No basketball was taught. It was all just energy effort. Where would you put that in terms of since you've been here, how animated and emotional he was in that time out? Not the highest. You know, it's pretty normal. You know, he's animated a lot, so, so you know, it's, it's, it gets hard to rank him. But, you know, this is one of those ones. You know, it's pretty normal. Did you guys say anything to each other coming out of that huddle, sort of like? Yeah, I mean, just trying to motivate each other. You know, we came out slow. Uh, they were hot, you know, but we were kind of just letting them get whatever they want, so. I mean, we knew we just had to become a team. We knew we were. Why do you think you guys came out slow? I mean, we were worried about that after the yeah, other game. Yeah, I don't know. That's been, I guess it's been, you know, kind of a recent trend lately. But we just got to change that. You know, I'm not really sure why. I think maybe just trying to get, you know, an easier feel into the game. But, you know, I'm just glad we brought the energy, you know, after that eight-minute mark. You head to the Sweet 16. How's it feel? Amazing. I mean, it didn't make the tournament last year. Uh, so just for me and some of the guys to have this turnaround, uh, you know, with this group of team, with this, with this I mean, group of people, I don't really have any words for it. It's just amazing. I, I mean, I just haven't stopped smiling since we won the game. Do you think enough is made of the turnaround that this team made from last year to this year? Uh, I mean, I don't really pay attention to it. Uh, you know, I have no idea how much people talk about last year still. I know we don't talk about it in this locker room, but, you know, I think people have, you know, definitely seen it, you know, considering we didn't make the tournament last year. You know, we have one seed this year, and just hoping to make it far. Just a far push, but you know, it may or not be talked about, but we don't talk about it here. What were the emotions during that big run, especially when you got those two blocks pretty, in sh pretty short succession? Can you talk about that stretch? Yeah, I was just trying to give energy, just trying to give a burst. Uh, you know, we were all excited. We wanted to push the pace and play fast. You know, Michigan State played fast, but we didn't think they could keep up, you know, with the Carolina pace, so we just wanted to continue to push the pace and give energy. You were giving up some, some height to the guys you were blocking shots for. How do, yeah. how do you do that? Genetics. <laughs> my mom. My mom. I get the genes from my mom. Uh, just being able to jump out. You know, I'm blessed. Thanks. 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 Together, keep raising our energy and our effort. Um, that's really how we we can you know, generate our offense and our defense is just energy and effort. And so every time they threw a punch, we were able to respond uh, with an even greater level of energy. And so um, it's just, I'm just so so proud of our group, man. How close is this team to playing? Yeah, I mean, that's that obviously right always there. want to improve. Uh, yeah. You're going to Los yeah, Angeles. You still have room to do whatever you need to be hard if it goes down Los Angeles. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think this team has a lot uh, more to give, and I think our ceiling is still super high, um, which is a great position to be in in March. You always want to have more to give, and so, um, but to, to, to battle the way we did tonight, um, it's a testament to, to our experience. It's a testament to kind of where we've been all season. We've been in positions like this. We've been uh, down before, you know, and uh, we're never out, and so that's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a hell of a feeling to be able to, to look to the left and the right and know each guy in the huddle has got your back and you have theirs, and um, you're going to go out and do whatever it takes to get a win uh, on a stage like this. So they were getting whatever they wanted inside in the first eight minutes. How did you guys turn that around? Uh, our, our toughness, that's all it was. It wasn't X's and O's, and that's what Coach Davis said to us. He said, uh, we can't even talk basketball until we raise our energy and our effort. Uh, and we did that, and we fought back, and uh, it was just a matter of our competition. And once we did that, we were able to, to basically handle anything they could throw at us. And then early on, their defense were, wasn't allowing you guys to get good shots at all. How did you change that? Uh, I, think, I think our defense helped us. I think getting stops uh, allowed us to kind of get out and run a little bit. Um, I think it, it wore them down. Uh, you know, they weren't as energized coming off of makes. It's hard to play defense coming off of a miss. And so, uh, you know, that, that helped change the energy a little bit. And, um, you know, we were able, guys came in and made huge plays to, to impact the, the, just the whole dynamic of the game. How did the atmosphere If two of our players are not playing that good in the first couple of minutes, I feel like they're good enough to like switch it on. If they switch it on, it's like basically over for the other team. Thank you so much, Elliot. Congratulations. Nice, feeling a nice rebound from the other night from you. Can you talk about your individual game? Oh yeah, um, I definitely felt as if I contributed better today, and I feel like it'll just keep getting better and better because I feel more comfortable comfortable out there and confident. Now, early on, it seemed like their defense wasn't allowing you guys to get open shots. How were you able to change that? 
Um, just pushing the pace. Um, we're the best in transition, and getting those transition looks just help open up everything for us. And, and I know you rolled down on yourself after the last game. Did everybody kind of encourage you, and did that help you coming into this game? Yeah, Talk definitely. Every, everybody encouraged me. Everybody on the team. Everybody in my circle. I just encouraged me, telling me they're proud of me and stuff like that. I mean, you have a bunch of assists. No, no turnovers, I believe, right? I don't know. I don't think so. not. So, so yeah, a really good floor game. Uh, do you think what, what's the what's the potential of this team for the rest of the tournament? I think that we can win every game, and I think that we can win the championship. So I think that's our potential. Thank you. Yeah, how are you gonna respond? And I think. In that instance, he, he needed us to respond, and we all needed to respond. And uh, you know, we took that personal and, and handled business. There was another one. They cut it to five with about nine minutes left. You guys were on a fourteen-two spurt, go up seventeen. You were on the floor during the beginning part of that. I think you had a putback, if I'm not sure, a layup or a putback. What sparked that for you guys? Because they were just kind of hanging around. It's, it kind of felt like you guys were more than you were, and then suddenly it's a five-point game, but you guys took off. I would say um, it started. I wouldn't say it started with me, but I think that I definitely had. Uh, um, definitely think that I had a big part to do with that uh, as far as like you know getting stops um, you know rebounding you know running the floor just just helping doing all the small things to really help my team you know, excel did you sense anything did you sense anything drain from them when that run occurred it looked like they For sure, didn't have like they the extra skip apart. in their step after that yeah yeah it seemed like they were falling apart and they may have been uh, arguing a little bit or something I don't know but I just, it just seemed like it was just somewhat of a, a sense of disconnect. Between Real fast, what did you say to Cormac when you were tipping it out to him and he was going for the ball too? That was right in front of us. I was, I was telling him to stay at half court because I know it, like they have a bigger team. So I know as far as me just going to you know, snag the rebound, I'm athletic enough. But to be fighting with uh, somebody like Hall or uh, I think there's any other big is just going to be a real battle. So I was trying to tip it to him. I know that his man was going to come in and try to rebound as well. So I was just telling him to stay at half court, not to tip it to him. Jalen, when you had the push back, you had the putback on Harrison missed three, and then Armando found you for the cut. That was the exact same play, right? You guys just ran it twice in a row? Pretty much, yeah. I what? mean, it was working. I think, that, like, uh, honestly, that's, that's something that um, I think not only, you know, college-level teams do. I think NBA teams, you know, on any level, I think if, if a player is working, why would, why would you go away from it? Go and work on it or, or go in, go to it until it fails, and then, then you change. Right. It looked like you guys then flipped it and ran on the other side. Other side. Too. Yeah. What's that a different look. Oh, I can't say it. Okay. <laughs> I can't say it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. It's going to be out there. Thank you. No problem. I mean, obviously, the energy changed when it went from them school, getting whatever they wanted inside to you guys shutting it down. What else? I mean, it could have been just energy. What, 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 what was different? Um, I think it was, uh, you know, we stayed in front of our man. And, um, you know, we lived with a, a tough fadeaway or a tough jump hook. And I think that that kind of helped us, uh, you know, rebound in a sense. Because it was like we didn't have somebody coming over to try to block the shot. We didn't have somebody trying to come over to block the shot. We didn't have, uh, you know, people trying to crash. They didn't even crash. Everybody was just, you know, boxing out and focusing on their man. And I think that we we honed in and really locked in on, the, on those matchups. Thank you. No problem. Oh, that helps us. Home games today, even today, I mean, it felt like a home game. I felt like I was in DME Smith Center. You know, the energy that they bring, you know, we're, we went down 12, and without them, we wouldn't have been able to come back. What happened on the shot that you had that took a lap or two around the rim? Like, what was going through your mind? Did you let it go and you watch it hit the rim? I, I, I thought it was going in because I, I felt like the ball, the ball was, you know, the rim was huge, and you know, I was just jumping up and down, like, praying to God it went in, and I saw Coach Davis like, oh, oh, and I, you know, I kind of thought the same thing and went in, you know, I just started celebrating and trying to get back on defense, though, because you know, they, they press, they, they push the ball, and I had to get back on defense. <laughs> Yesterday you said this game was going to be a bloodbath. Did it live up to your expectations? Oh yeah, it did. It did. It was chippy. You know, a lot of excuse my language, shit talking you know, from the start to the beginning, even before the game, man. I, and the stretching. I mean, it was a lot of, a lot of you know hostility out there. But you know, it's all love at the end of the day. They're a great team. You know, they have a lot of good players. You know, I had a pretty good matchup with my position. Malik Hall. You know, RJ had a good matchup with Tyson Walker. Mom had a good matchup with like five of their bigs. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's basketball, and that's how it is. Which of your guys Oh yeah, I mean, I think it's up there. You know, I, I think a lot of teams try to bring that mentality to beat us. That they think they can bully us because we're a smaller team. We're North Carolina, you know, quote unquote, pretty boys. But you know, at the end of the day, we love those type of games, and you know, we're ready. And we have an older team this year, so you're not going to believe us. Did you have a sit? What, what, what was it? I mean, I've asked the question there. What was it? It seemed like you found a switch in the first half, and you know, things weren't going your way for a little bit, and then you were on and you were nodding, and I'm like, you don't know like where. Where that, did you get the switch from? I'll give all the credit to Coach Sully. You know, after the first time out, I always come out in the first four minutes. Jay Witt gets me, and Coach Sully walks up to me, and he's like, what the f*** are you doing? 
Right. After, after you said that, that's all I need to say. I mean, that's all. That's all I need to hear. You know, I, I ramped up my energy. I try to get deflection and try to you know, bring energy to the team. And defensively, I feel like when Paxton came in, he helped us with the energy, and then we just sped off of him. So he, so Sully, like came out from the bench and was like sort of met you. Yeah, he, I mean, he always. That's my guy. You know, he, he's always texting me. You know, he's in my corner. He's always, you know, we're training and giving me tips on defense. He's our defensive coach, and you know, he's always, you know, he's hard on me. And that's that's what I asked him to do. I asked him to come here and you know be on me and not be nice to me and treat me like any other player. That's what they do, and I love it. Harrison, we saw a lot of energy from Thank you guys you. coming back into the locker room. Just what were, what were the emotions like in the locker room, and just what's it feel like to be punching your ticket to the Sweet 16 here? Man, we won the, as Coach Davis would say, we won the Charlotte tournament, and it just feels amazing for me. I mean, I don't, I, this is my first time here, so I don't even know what this feeling is like. You know, I'm about to go back to Chapel Hill, go on Franklin Street, you know, enjoy the night, and get back to work tomorrow. You Where's mentioned, your head? You mentioned Michigan State kind of talking a little bit during that game, and you right. said something coming into the locker room. How does it feel to kind of beat a team that was trying to, you know, get under your skin the way they were? I mean, it feels amazing. You, you can imagine how, how it is and people are, you know, talking talking junk and all that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, I wish we're a humble team. Like I say, humble, you know, you never know what happened. You never know you can lose a game. You never know it's not your night. And, you know, they were talking and, you know, it feels good to send them home. And then just that big run at the end of the first half, 23-3 to three or whatever it was, when you're playing in the middle of a run like that, are you aware of what's going on or is this something that you don't really realize until after it's over? One thing I, I've done, I, I, I try to not <laughs> – I try to not pay attention to the um, to the score until like the last like five minutes. I just try to play freely and you know just just play. And I feel like I look at the score too much and think too much and think about oh this is a good shot, this is a bad shot. So for me, we're going on a run. You know, you just feel the energy in the crowd. You know, our crowd did a great job of bringing us energy, coaches brought us energy, and at the end of the day, you know, it's just fun out there, I'm having fun. You were kind of struggling from the pool in recent games. When did you feel like you found found the rhythm, and when, when did you know that? It was going to be a night for you. I mean, that's just, that's basketball. You're never going to have a good shooting night every night. You know, I'm going to have a good shooting night. This is a ridiculous shooting night for me. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just trust my work. You know, I get back to the gym, do the same routine, didn't change anything up, and just trust my work and kept shooting open shots. What were they saying? What were they saying? I'm not going to say what they were saying, you know, but just, they, were, they were talking. They were talking for sure. A lot. Not quite well, as clean as Hubert? <laughs> no. no. Not, okay. not even, that might be the most I've heard a team talk in a while. Really? In a while. Did that dissipate a little in the second half, though? It did. It did because we started talking back. You know, I mean, we, we were talking. <clears throat> we're a team. We, we talk whether we're up or we're down. And, you know, the refs are, told us to chill out. And never that happened, you know, the, the talk December. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all love between those the teammates. They're basketball players. You know, I have no hate for them. It's just it's a game. Hey, um, Armando just said you would. Stay confident. Keep shooting those shots because we know we hit a big shot. And going into next year, I mean, he'll be an amazing shooter. Elliot just said that this team loves L.A. Uh, how, 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 how long have you guys had your eyes set on getting to the West Coast and getting to this point? I mean, it's going to be great. I mean, you look back all the way in August when we had the break. I mean, half of the team was out there. We got a chance to all connect, work out, go out, have fun, just enjoy ourselves. So just fun to be back out there. But obviously going out there this time, it's a business trip, and it'll be none of that. But we're super excited for the great weather. I mean, y'all be going to L.A. too. Aren't y'all excited? Super excited for LA. Why not? Harrison just said that Michigan State was talking a lot of trash. Probably the most he's heard all season. Is, does that kind of ring true for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a lot of trash talking, but I mean, that's what you want to do. You got to go out there and back it up. And we got a lot of headhunters on our team, and we got killers. And it really turned us up. And I mean, obviously, we didn't just go out like that either. We said our things, but before the game, it was definitely a lot of trash talking and just hearing stuff through the grapevine. And I mean, it turned us up. So if you want to do that, do it. What did you hear through the grapevine? Um, be honest with you. Go ahead. It's fine now. No. Um, it's fine. Uh, they're a great team at the end of the day when we beat them, so that's all that's good. Armando, we felt so much energy from the team coming into the locker room there. What were the emotions like and what was it like celebrating in the locker room after this one? It was amazing. I'm not going to lie to y'all. This was probably the most stressed I've been for a game since I've been at Carolina. I mean, because Michigan State, they're a scary team. They're physical. They play fast just like us. And I was super stressed going into the game. I mean, I told Big May right before the game, I'm like, man, like, Stress, like I don't want to lose this game, and but I mean I was poised at the same time, and first of all, there and win that is just a huge weight lifted off our back, and we're just glad to win the Charlotte tournament. Now we're moving over to the LA tournament. What did May say when you told him that? Just go out there and play and have fun, and I mean once the ball gets tipped, I really forget everything. But going into this game, I mean I was definitely super stressed. What changed after the first few minutes when they were pretty much getting whatever they wanted inside? I mean really they threw the first punch and. Um, it definitely stunned us a little bit. I mean, just how fast they got up and down the court. It's something we hadn't seen all year. I think they really rivaled us and fast to get up and down the court. And um, they got us out of our actions early. But it was one of those things where we kind of just had to 
get used to everything and soak everything in, and then we were good. We defended the the actions really well, and then we got into our actions and we started scoring, so it was all fun. And all due respect for Wagner, it felt like this was the first real test for you guys in the tournament. How did it feel to not just beat a team like Michigan State, but to do it as comfortably as y'all did? It feels amazing. Uh, I mean, they're a battle-tested team. They went to the Final Four last year, and they started off slow earlier in the year, but they started to get their stride, and what they did to Mississippi State obviously showed how great of a team they are. And for us to go out there, after being down 12 and respond like that, it was great, but credit to the fans and Credit to the coaches too, because they coach an amazing game and they really kept us in the game. Um, we just like to let our game do the talking. We don't like to get into the to the talking trash and whatnot because that's not us. Um, our game uh, displays all of that, and we do a good job of kind of just keeping our composure and don't get into that. Is that it? Like they felt like they they could punk y'all. Um, I mean, I guess on their end they probably felt that, um, but we knew in this locker room of how gritty we are. We been in different type of games and battles that came down to the wire to a dog fight type of game, so um, this was nothing new for us. RJ, I know you're perfectly content taking 22, 24 shots a game if you have to, but yeah. when you don't have to, mm-hmm. like the other day and like today, yeah. how much better is this team when you don't have to take so many shots? I mean, we're a lot better because you can see everyone contributing in so many ways. And, um, I don't know how many guys we have in double figures today, but I feel like four. Yeah, so, I mean, just as... That's championship basketball right there. And when you have everyone that's dialed in and making shots and making plays, um, that's winning basketball, and that's going to help us a lot. We talk a lot about Cormac and, and Harrison contributing, being that third scorer sometimes. Yeah. The three of you were 10 of 19 combined for three today. Mm-hmm. How different? That, that yeah. puts you guys in a completely different level. Yeah, I mean, that's efficiency right there. I mean, yeah. just I think it also just speaks of um, us finding each other. I think. We did all did a good job of just kind of just playing off of each other. Marlon was able to, you know, face a double team and find open guys like Jay Witt dive into the basket, found Harrison for a three. Um, for myself, finding Marlon in the short row, like just stuff like that and plays like that. That allows us to be great and um, allows us to come up with runs uh, and make winning plays. They were hanging around. They were hanging around. They have five, I think, with eight minutes left. You guys went on a 14-2 runs, put them away. Mm-hmm. Did you sense... Their energy, their, their, their juice kind of drained during the worst time run. Uh, I didn't sense theirs, but I sensed ours. <laughs> and um, the way we came out the first four minutes and the second four minutes of the second half was great. Um, and we relied on our energy rather than theirs. And we was able to make a run, get stops, and then finish in the offense. RJ, sometimes it seems like they go trying to beat you up personally, like punch you in the face. Right? Yeah. One time you got fouled under the basket and you sort of just stood there for a second. Like, do you see that? Do you feel like that? And what do you do to prepare for that? Um, I mean, I know teams are going to just try to be as physical as possible, um, try to knock me off or try to get into my head. But one thing about me is, like, none of that physicality or foul is really going to get to me. Um, I'm a composed – I keep my composure. I'm a poised kid. And um, I expect it coming into games. I expect um, either physical off down screens, physical off ball screens, double – our heads, so my mind's already made up of um, how the game's going to be played because I know what's to come, but it's more so just keeping my composure and not getting into that because I know that's what teams will want me to do. RJ, what kind of message does this send to the rest of the tournament? I mean, there's a lot of chatter about y'all being the weakest number one seed. How much do you pay attention to that, and, and what kind of message does this one send? I mean, I think that's funny. I mean, I feel like just each game and each tournament we play in, I feel like everyone has something to say about us, which is fine, and they have their own opinions, which they're, you know, they have the right to, but I think we do a good job of trying ignoring all of that, and we don't pay attention to if we're being picked to win a game or what's being said about us as a team. Um, we know what we have in this locker room is good enough to uh, continue doing what we're doing, and um, that doesn't bother us at, at all. Was that about as much junk talking as you've heard from another team this season? Saying I'm sorry? Is it, was it about, about as much talk you've heard from another team this season? Nah, I mean, they're probably up there. I mean, we you know, have our rival games, and I think that speaks to the talking trash. And um, There's a lot of games that have been a lot of talking trash. and um, But, I mean, this is just one of them. Right, what do you tell... Um, we tell Elliot after 